When I leave the lab to go home, I ford the five blocks to the train station via a rivulet of startup hoodies gaggled together, each blue or gray with crisply fonted text or a gently curving vector graphic stippled across the shoulders. The hoodies are forced by the narrow concrete to school through the button-downs who stand off-center, offering each other the last cigarette from crisp packs of Marlboros. Avoiding them all, the yoga pants flat-foot it to the next corner. Some days we're all swept up by a torrential stream of black and orange windbreakers and stiffly brimmed caps. I don't like game days. Inside, the train is shiny from the friction and oily heat of clinging hands and rubber soles. The air is pumped in through grates overhead and smells dry and laundered next to the skin of bodies unused to a day of cloying heat. Everyone is looking at their hand screen. I am looking at mine, too. The scanner feels light and robust as I dig it out of my bag, intent on modeling the ride. Unsure of the rules that allow the photography of non-consenting strangers in public, the general if-you-can-see-it-you-can-shoot-it rule extends to my depth-sensing device. I wonder about the shape of things, about the particular curve of the little boy's back as he snores gently against his mother's chest. Or maybe you missed that. I swing the scanner around slowly, careful to rescan areas where the wireframe mesh of little green triangles fails to stretch around the thin, vertical pipe crowded with clenched fingers. I don't scan again until I'm home. In the kitchen, the cabinet front just this side of Crooked, Sven is spooning leftover meatballs and coils of homemade noodles from a glass lock into my favorite bowl the one with the blue and white flowers. Then, the day's clothes stripped in our darkened bedroom and replaced with blue sweatpants, ink-stained and sagging around the ankle, I curl into my spot, the corner of the wide living room couch amongst my collected papers and glues and markers and sequins to listen to audiobooks and draw, until the final bell of the microwave brings my husband, bearing two bowls of steaming food, marching into the living room. It's time to stop, he says, and I relent, sinking back into the cushions to eat. 